Did you know there are multiple ways to share content on Zoom? And one of them lets you share only a portion of your screen. I'm going to show you which one is best for you. Hi there, I'm Betsy. I've been on Zoom every day for years, so you don't have to. And I love taking the complicated and making it seem simple. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to share your screen on Zoom. Whether you're teaching a class, presenting from a PowerPoint or from a Canva presentation, or even sharing your sound from a YouTube video or one of your own videos. I'm going to walk you through how to share your entire screen versus sharing a portion of the screen. I'm going to show you all of that in this video. And if you are completely new to Zoom and you don't even know what I'm talking about when referring to sharing your screen or you've tried it recently and you think, oh no, I need a lot more practice, then check out our beginner's guide to Zoom linked in the description below. Okay, let's go take a look. Okay, so it all starts here inside a Zoom meeting. Now, if you're the host, your toolbar is going to look like this, where you get all of the features. If you're a co-host, you're going to get something similar. And if you're a participant, you're going to have a toolbar, but it's not going to have as many features on it. You know, some of the things that a, a host would get. However, you always get the share button. It's that green button. Now, if the host has set permissions that you can't share screen, then you won't be able to, and it might be a little limited. But here's what goes into sharing a screen. This is going to blow your mind. Watch. So it all starts here. Click there on the green share screen button. And I'm going to break this down for you first. So the top row says entire screen. Those are the features that will share in to your meeting, the entire screen, you can see up there, these little labels, as opposed to the next section down is labeled application windows. So that's extremely important that you realize that the content that you pick up top is going to share anything that's on that screen. So yes, what are we talking? Desktop one, is my main computer with the camera that's attached and where Zoom is installed. And then desktop two, or you might have desktop three, four or five even, are external monitors that are plugged into your main computer. And so that's what we're talking about here. And believe you me, it is so important to use extra monitors plugged in for your Zoom meeting. It gives you extended landscape so that you can share content and maybe still see the participants on another monitor. It's a great thing to add to your Zoom meeting. Now, in those cases, if you shared everything on monitor two, that would be anything you put there. If you opened your email, they would see that. If you went to a private message, they would see that. So you want to be very sure that you have anything confidential closed when you use desktops. As opposed to, as you scroll down, now when you're looking at these are application windows. And so this is a little more secure. However, it's more limited too. For instance, you can see underneath each one, it tells us what application is there. So whichever applications you currently have open, and yes, you need to have opened them prior to coming into your Zoom meeting, really prior to sharing. So if you don't see any choices here, it means that you don't currently have any applications open. That would be something like PowerPoint or maybe your browser, Google Chrome. You can see I have a few of those windows open. And then finally along the bottom. So your browser windows, there can be a number of them. And I don't mean tabs. I mean the browser window. For instance, if I were to open up this browser window, you see the Chrome browser on your screen. And if you were to open up some new tabs, you would see those too. So you have to understand that when you're sharing your browser window that you're sharing anything in that browser that you go to, that either you have open or that you go to. 
In addition, when you are sharing content, this bar will be visible to you on the screen. It could be anywhere on the screen, but it's only visible to you. And inside that bar are controls. So we call this your floating controls bar. And you can move it out of the way because sometimes it is hiding over something that you have to click on. And those controls are inside that green rectangle that you see. So we're going to break this down. There's a black rectangle, then there's a green rectangle and a red rectangle next to it. Yes, all of these have different meanings. And so inside the green rectangle, right there, there's a little curly arrow and it says dock to top. So when you click there, that's exactly what it does. It docks it to the top of the room. Now the arrow is pointing down. And so when you click there, it moves to the bottom of the screen. You can also put your pointer anywhere in the floating controls bar, like not on a button though, not on one of these buttons. You can see my pointer is right there, kind of like on the edge and click and drag. And then you can, you can move this around the screen. So oftentimes when I am helping people in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, they often ask me to get my eyes on their stuff, which is a benefit to what I do. So I not only create videos all the time and, and courses, but I work with people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups so that we can work on this together and you can practice. And most likely this question's asked of me a lot, which is how do I find this first of all, and how do I get it out of the way? in order to control my screen during the Zoom meeting. So not only can you move it manually, but you can also see what you're sharing. So right there in the second green rectangle, right there, there is a little notch. Now notice that I put my pointer away, it disappears. When I bring my pointer there and I'm not even clicking, you see this little tiny down pointing arrow, kind of like a notch. When you click there, it reveals the preview of what you're sharing. So now you can see what you're sharing. So if you are one of those people out there that says, do you see my screen? No more. Now, when you share, you can say, please take a look at the screen I'm sharing right now. And as you're talking to them, you can describe it and then you can click this little arrow and see what they're seeing. If for some reason they're not seeing what you want to see, you can change the share and that's right here. So you're going to click this green button right in your bar and then you're going to say, oh, I really wanted you to see the Google screen. Or I really wanted you to see the YouTube screen. So you're going to pick which one they wanted. Or I really wanted you to see my PowerPoint. You're not going to say that out loud, but you're going to say that in your head. And then at the bottom of the screen, you always click that blue share button and then your next share will come up like this. So in this case, I am in share mode with me as the little box in the top corner of the screen. And if I wanted to, I could change the layout. So I'm going to come back to you here and show you that if I wanted to, I could change the layout of how that screen in that presentation shows up by clicking the layout button. So when I click there, I have these choices. I can choose either as background or over the shoulder or side by side or content only. Now, right now, the way I'm making this video for you, I'm showing you my natural background so that I can actually show you the bar. This is something that I do specifically in these videos. But when you are picking it, you're going to pick your PowerPoint and then look and see where these layouts are right there. So you're going to demonstrate by choosing a layout if you desire. For instance, if I wanted to, I could pick the PowerPoint, I could pick as background. And then when I click share, that's exactly what happens. So now you're seeing me where the screen, the PowerPoint slide, which is the shared screen is the background behind me. And I am an overlay. Now keep in mind, here is a huge note for people who record to the cloud. This layout is not picked up in cloud recordings. So if you need this captured in a recording, you wanna make sure that you have someone record who is in your meeting with you record locally to their computer so that you can capture this look. You can also see that this style would be captured side by side, in a side by side layout. You can pick the over the shoulder layout. And yes, it does let you change the size of the content. So if you wanted to, you could make the slide much bigger and then you can go back to content only. So those are all with your layouts. 
Another thing you can do with your layouts, and it doesn't have to do with sharing an entire desktop or even an application, is to go back into that share screen by clicking the share button and noticing at the top, you've got documents and advanced. So you even have two more screens worth of sharing options and features. You can share a digital whiteboard. You can share a Zoom doc. You can share a Zoom note. And then even below, you can connect your cloud services. If you have documents that you need to share with your participants, you can share them from these cloud services. Now, keep in mind, the files that are stored there must have permission uh, rights. You must be giving the rights to those people in order to view those files. If those files are only viewable by you, then you can't share them into a meeting. People who are here aren't going to be able to see them if they don't have rights to them. The third tab up there is the advanced tab. And this gives you even more options. Look, eight more options for sharing. You can share a video directly into this meeting. And this allows you to have the player controls right here in the meeting with you. You can share Zoom clips. Love this one. When you click on Zoom clips, it goes right to the library of your Zoom clips. And if you want to know more about how to use Zoom clips and what it all means and where your Zoom clips library is, check out our video called How to Use Zoom Clips. We'll put the link in the description for you. The other types of advanced sharing techniques involve even setting up a second camera that you might want to switch to. Like for instance, you might have another document camera like this. This is the Okio cam. And you might want to set this up on your desktop, on your actual desktop, your tabletop, with maybe an actual textbook or a notebook. You might even want to put a dry erase board. Some of the online educators that I've met out there or coaches, online entrepreneurs, I know you're out there and you just say, hey, I'm old school. I want to put my dry erase board, my little one. I want to write on it. In order for that content to come up on your screen, you can share the content directly from here. That would be a second camera. So this opens up the flexibility of what content you're bringing into your Zoom meeting and what people are seeing, not just something that you've opened up from your computer screen. It can be something that is maybe laying on your actual physical tabletop. Okay, so next, that brings us to the second row. See, all of these are so fantastic. The other advanced features are sharing audio. When you share computer sound, it comes back as if you're not sharing anything. It almost looks like there's nothing else open. You are full screen, but what's showing on your screen is this new little tab at the top that says, my computer sound. And other people on their screen are seeing your name, in a sense, Betsy's computer sound. So at this point, any sound that you play from your computer will be played into the meeting. Now, this is important to know because any music that you play on your end, like I could go right to a, a YouTube video right now and play the music. So this is where you are sharing sound directly into the meeting, but people are not seeing the content that you're bringing up. So it's perfect for sharing music, let's say from a video that you have, or even a YouTube video. Now, keep in mind that if you are playing copyrighted music, you want to make sure that this recording that you're making is not out in the public because that's not allowed. It's not your music. So you can play it in private settings, play it into your Zoom meeting for private settings. But if you were recording this, that you keep in mind where you're putting that recording. When you share sound into the meeting, remember, we went to share, advanced, and then share computer sound. You have the choice of picking mono or stereo. And if you were to pick stereo, if the music that you're playing was recorded in, in high fidelity, it will appear. That's where it kind of comes out of two speakers on the left and the right. That's where you hear it in stereo. It has to have been recorded in stereo. And then all you have to do is hit play. I've got mine over here. So you can see how you can play the music in the background. This is perfect for break time. Here, I'll play the beginning. This is even perfect because it's not as grand. So you can play the music in the background. Yeah, very faint. 
maybe play some meditation music while you are doing a breath exercise. Some of my coaches out there who are breath work coaches, meditation coaches, health coaches. If you are a real estate instructor or a finance instructor or a lawyer or a tax agent, and you want to play some music while your audience does an exercise or a case study, you can play some music in the background. This is how you would do it. Okay. So now keep in mind that when you're sharing sound that comes from one of your websites like here, or one of your YouTube videos, or even from your PowerPoint, that you must check this checkbox over here on the right, share sound. And you can see there your mono or stereo are also listed. If for some reason you're showing a video and you want to optimize that for video sharing, make sure you check that box as well. The other features here on the advanced tab are connecting your iPhone or iPad. Yes, sorry, Samsung people. If you don't have an Apple phone or an Apple device, you can show your Samsung or phone or tablet if it's laying on the physical table using a second camera like I showed earlier. If you do have an Apple phone, you have connections to show those directly into the meeting. You can also show your slides as your background. That's not the best scenario for people with PowerPoint with animation though, because it will take your PowerPoint and turn it into a PDF, a pretty neat feature. And then finally, the portion of screen. When you click this one, watch what happens. You see, it shows us a portion of the screen. Now I've got this on my second monitor over here on the left so that when I click and drag, I can actually change what portion of this screen is going to be shared into the meeting. So it's not the entire screen like this. When you get to areas that are smaller, maybe smaller writing, and you want to take the focus right in to the portion of the screen that you're sharing, you can actually make the portion you share smaller by just clicking and dragging with the mouse. And we have a video on that as well. So if you need to know more about how to share a portion of your screen, check out the video on our YouTube channel. I'll put the link to that video below. And that is it. Now you know how to share your screen in Zoom. And if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out, which is every week. So stay tuned. Want to learn how to take your Zoom skills to the next level? Check out my playlist on Zoom tips and tricks in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.